Firstly, I've got a cold. I might sound slightly different. It's very annoying. Secondly, sometimes I just like to sit on Airbnb and look at places to stay in Scotland and around the world with no intention of actually visiting them, but just out of curiosity. When I say sometimes, I mean fairly regularly, but I found some amazing Scottish Airbnbs that you can stay in and because I've already started kind of opening up again a little bit, like with the pandemic you weren't really allowed to travel much around here and now you kind of can, I think. It changes quite often I feel. I thought I would share my favourite weird and wonderful Airbnbs that I found because I think you'll all like them. Before I show you this first Airbnb, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Did you know that over 70% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed? That's madness. Do me a solid and subscribe. Right, so have you ever wanted to stay in a bus? <laughs> Put your hands up if you've ever wanted to stay in a bus. I'm kidding on, but there's this Airbnb called The Magic Bus. It's near Aileen Donan Castle where you pass on the way to Sky. This, I love that. Right, this is one of my favourite Airbnbs that I've found. You have the entire bus to yourself, obviously. The person that owns it is a super host. It has amazing reviews. I'm pretty sure it's £88 a night. Oh my god, it's amazing. It has amazing views of the lochs below. It's surrounded by woodland. It's in walking distance of a little village where you can eat and drink and go to the local shop. It's very, apparently very peaceful and tranquil, which, I mean, that's what you want when you stay somewhere in Scotland, don't you really? It was a well-travelled Mercedes 709 minibus uh, before it became what it is just now that you can stay in. It's interiors all handmade. The main area is light and functional apparently. It has a raised double bed area to the front of the bus. There's a little seating area outside which I absolutely love. Imagine sitting here. Imagine just sitting here having a wee gin and a wee like whatever else. It just looks great to me. There's a log burner and there's extra wood supplied in the colder months that you know you can use if you if you need to. One of the lines in the description that caught me was Freshly baked bread from a nearby small village bakery Real coffee and fairy lights are just a few of the touches that add up to the magic You've so sold, I will, how can I book this right now? <laughs> and then it talks about some of the stuff it's got Like it's got your kettle, your toaster And some freshly handmade bread from the small bakery It's got like a bunch of other stuff as well There's also a cat, a pet cat Which isn't allowed on the bus unfortunately But you can pet the cat if you like cats Also, now if you like a wee bit of living wild. The toilet's a compost toilet and they'll show you how to work it if you've never used one before. It has a small sink with running water where you can wash your face if you fancy. But there's no shower or bath facilities so I think this sounds exciting. But if you do want a shower 10 miles away on the way to the Isla Sky, there's some very clean and good working public showers. <laughs> it just looks cosy. I love the little seating area outside. I just think that looks ideal. Honestly, I really kind of want to book this if I'm honest. Honestly, if I'm honest. I also just see it's roasting here. Like, I think today it's in the 20s again. I mean, yesterday I think it was 24 degrees Celsius. And I understand if you live in other countries, that is probably cold to you. But our houses are designed to keep the heat in. Right now it's probably in the 20s in this room alone. There's no air conditioning. We don't have air conditioning in our houses. The houses are built to keep heat in. <laughs> so I'm sweltered right now, but I'm doing it for YouTube. Let's move on to the next one before I burn up. So in case you've ever wanted to stay in a bridge, then I've got the place for you. I literally have the bridge house, which is a unique two bedroomed home on a bridge. I'm not even joking, it's it's in a bridge, right, I'll show you. Again, great reviews, even better reviews than the Magic Bus. It's described as an unusual two bedroom home, which is actually built on a bridge spanning the River Ardo in 1881. It's got a stone spiral staircase, it's got traditional Scottish timber clad walls, stone, pine, flooring and even a uh, privy directly over the river below. It was recently renovated and it's a very quiet, peaceful and rural location. It's got a sauna as well, um, pretty much like this room here right now. Who needs a sauna? You just come to Scotland and sit in a room with a window shut in 20 odd degree heat. This place looks, it looks lovely, it's got great reviews. I think it's £155 a night thereabouts, I think it depends on when you go, but yeah, 155 a little bit steeper than the Magic Bus, but it looks very old and like, you know, it was recently renovated, but it still looks amazing, it still looks kind of quirky and old, and but also really cosy, it's got the fireplaces, I love the walls, it does look really cool. 
it looks haunted and that's what I'm into like it just looks but it also looks modern at the same time like I don't you know it's one of those ones I like the little seating bit outside as well love I love an outdoor seating area that's private that looks has a nice view I'm into that and that's that's what I see here looks great here's a picture of of the actual bridge in 1884 which I thought was cool yeah I love it why wouldn't you want to stay in a bridge I don't know if the magic bus wasn't luxurious enough for you I've got a four person luxury bus with a hot tub to show you. Again, this looks amazing. This is in Gifford, by the way. I don't even think I said where the other ones were, but you can look, I'll link them all below. It's fine, you can go check them out. This one, again, has amazing, like it's almost got five stars. It's got 4.98 stars on Airbnb. It's got a glass roof to panoramic views of the Lammermuir Hills. It's got llamas and chickens. My downstairs neighbour is just going to hear me going llamas and chickens. You can greet them before breakfast on the deck, apparently. It just looks, it looks ridiculous. Uh, again, amazing reviews. Look at that little log burner. Cute. Look at, it just looks very modern and clean and nice. It looks like somewhere you'd go if you're going to treat yourself, but you also wanted like a cool, quirky place to stay. Like a bus, but like a luxury bus, you know. I'm just scrolling through the pictures just now. I'm into this. I like the views. I, li I like this big decking bit and look it's got a big barbecue outside llamas and chickens and a swing set i'd be on that swing set don't even care but yeah if the magic bus wasn't doing it for you then maybe this luxury bus will so let's move away from buses and bridges let's move on to any lord of the rings fans uh are watching this right now i have a a hobbit hideaway to show you in murray this is one of my favorites i've ever seen ever it can hold six people it's got two bedrooms five beds, one bathroom, five star reviews on, on Netflix I was going to say, on Airbnb. It's an award winning space apparently. It's designed to invoke inner peace and tranquility. It was handcrafted with love to provide a real sense of warmth and nourishment, a welcome escape from the pressures of daily life. It has been described as being like a giant hug. A place that once you enter, you can't help but smile. Okay, that sounds cool. Purpose built using locally sourced, plentiful, renewable and recycled materials, including straw bales, round wood, stone, earth and clay. Um, it's furnished with a high percentage of pre-loved, repurposed and recycled treasures. And it's a proper eco home. Like, I love the sound of it. They said that they make it easy for you to enjoy a stress-free, low-impact holiday. You can pick your own fresh and seasonal food straight from the garden. Use their fair trade beverages, reusable cups, bottles and bags, compost bins and recycling, as well as cruelty-free soaps and cleaning products. The electricity is sourced from 100% renewable energy and the water is straight from the spring. I love the fact that they describe themselves as uh, being inclusive and accessible which is important and if you have any special needs or requirements they'll do their best to make any reasonable adjustments to accommodate them. They have Wi-Fi though, like I know it's an eco relaxing place but they do have Wi-Fi, a Bluetooth speaker and loads of games, books and jigsaw puzzles etc and toys and a giant Jenga if you're into that. That kind of, Jenga scares me so I don't really, wouldn't really be into that but you know if you are then that's fine. They've got a barbecue, picnic tables, a fire pit, I mean it just sounds amazing. Yeah they say as well they also keep their prices the same the whole year round because they think it's unfair to penalise families with uh, high prices during the school holidays. And they also welcome dogs if you want to bring your dog, bring it. And they don't charge extra. Oh I just saw I'm reading this and it sounds amazing like it's approximately two acres with open green space, paths, wild garden areas, a kitchen garden with a polytunnel, a fire pit, an enchanting fairy glen with a bubbling brook. You can, yeah, pick your own fresh fruit and vegetables for dinner and dine al fresco. I need to go here as well. I need to, I can't deal with this. Like, this video is really not helping. My bank's going to be screaming, man. Can't even get enough holidays from work for all these. So now we're going to go from luxurious down to a boat. A lifeboat. I saw this and I was like, this is quite interesting. Again, it's got amazing reviews. It's a 110 year old lifeboat. It's situated on Argyle's rugged coastline. And apparently it's ideal for kayakers, walkers, and those wishing to just enjoy peace and quiet with nice surroundings. There's toilet and shower facilities a short walk away. And there's a pet charge of five pounds a night. It's pretty much got everything you need in it. You'll have sole occupancy of the lifeboat and the shower and toilet facility. There's a cove um, with amazing views. There's an abundance of wildlife apparently, from seals and dolphins to otters and sea eagles. And it just sounds great. The minimum charge for a night there is £60 for up to two people. Additional guests are £20 per person per night. 
They also say we do not provide linen, so if requested, they can provide a sleeping bag with a liner, pillow and towel, etc. But this, is, it does look pretty cool. It's been described in the reviews as very unusual accommodation, but everyone's saying it's amazing. Like, wouldn't it be cool to stay in these places, like, for a video, like, to do a vlog in each of these places? If Airbnb wants to sponsor me and, like, maybe do something like that, then that's fine, I'll, I'll be up for that. Perhaps the lifeboat is a bit too small for you, I don't know. Maybe you'd rather stay in a castle. Got you covered. We have Daresy Castle here uh, in Fife and this looks unreal. Oh my god, again, almost five star reviews. It's a unique self-catered property which sleeps 14 people. So if you have that many friends, then why in? It's close to St Andrews, uh, which is amazing, and Edinburgh, which is a one hour drive. It was first sighted in the 12th century and it's been the location of secret Scottish parliaments, military sages and a safe haven for escapee monarchs. It became a ruin in the 19th century and then in 92 it was bought and rebuilt by the current owner who worked hard to restore it to its original medieval character with the comforts of a modern family home. What stood out for me in this place were the bathrooms and the baths. The baths look ridiculous, like I love a good bath but Jesus Christ. It's also got six acres of ground including a cop with a woodland walk down to River Eden, a walled herb, herb garden, an orchard. <sighs> this is ridiculous, like, I'm just looking at these pictures and I'm like... <coughs> <laughs> so yeah, if the lifeboat is too small for you, then you have the option of staying in this massive ass castle. Let's see how much it is. <laughs> so it is £900 um, uh, a night. <laughs> But let's move on to a really, another really cool one. For the, the sci-fi fans out there, how about staying on an airship? A secluded airship in Germany with breathtaking views. A sustainable getaway. It's an iconic insulated aluminium pod with views of the sound of mull from dragonfly windows. It's comfortable, quirky and cool and it does not pretend to be a five star hotel. The reviews tell the story. It just looks, it looks so Cool. It looks like you're staying in a little tin UFO with a cool fire, amazing views. I really want to stay here. Like, I think this looks so cool. Again, look at the little seating area outside where you can sit and enjoy the views. I am into that. I'm, I'm so into that. Let's see how much it is. So, okay, it's fully booked up until January 2022. 17th of January, Monday. Let's do to the Thursday because it's again minimum three nights, £160 a night times three is plus service fee, £561 for three nights, so it's no cheap, but it does look really cool. The airship was one of my favourites, I thought that looked amazing. It's just different, isn't it? If that's still too fancy for you, I've got a bothy on the Isle of Egg. Very back to basics, right? We went from a castle on an airship to a very basic place. It has, again, amazing reviews. It's converted from the original Croft cattle shed. It's a self-catering accommodation for up to four people. £55 a night, regardless of the number of people staying. It has bedding, wood, gas and electricity and it has stunning views looking westwards over the Atlantic Ocean towards the Isle of Rum. They have a house extension which means visitors have access to a shower and a flushing toilet. On sunny days there's plenty of hot water from the solar water heater. It's got a full gas cooker, running water etc. There's a compost toilet again as well. However, you can't bring your car to egg. You need to meet, so they'll meet you off the boat and bring you over at the accommodation. It says, please note there are only two boats per day in the summer and only four per week in the winter. So make sure you get the, make the boat. And yeah, it's basic, but it's got everything you need. I love it, I love it, I want to go there as well. But if that's not strange enough for you, what about a, an 126 year old railway signal box? If you're looking for something really different, then yeah. Dave, the must be the guy that owns this, he saved the signal box um, from being destroyed when it was no longer required on the railway and he transported it 12 miles to their home. And it says here, remember, it is a small wooden box in the country, not a house. We have installed a small double sofa bed and a single, a microwave, a kettle and a toaster. Bring your own sleeping bags if possible. We can provide bedding, but do request it. This is basic rural accommodation. The bathroom's in an outbuilding, um, but it's got a shower, basin, toilet and heating. It says here as well, please be aware that this is a very old structure, it's not insulated and with the only heating provided by a wood-burning stove. 
That sounds cool though. It says obviously this isn't suited for everybody. For families with very young children or anyone with no experience of real fires or very cold temperatures, please think twice about booking. Because it says here in winter we can have quite severe frosts. But yeah, I think it looks quite cool. Like if you look at the pictures and if you look at the reviews as well, the reviews are amazing. But imagine being like, I'm just going to stay in like an old railway signal box. Like why not? I'm pretty sure this room with all the guitars and stuff I think that's part of the other building and I don't think you're allowed access to it just now during Covid times but double check that, it might have changed. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. But if you are looking for something, we'll finish with one of the most luxurious ones. It's a treehouse, Loch Lomond treehouse. I love Loch Lomond, like I live near Loch Lomond. Favourite, one of my favourite places in the world, if not my favourite. So this is a short distance from the southern tip of Loch Lomond. It's a two-person wooden house that was built into a tree and it overlooks a mature magical garden, it says. It's got a comfortable seating, outdoor bath, toasty wood-burning stove, mood lighting and a barbecue area. And dogs are welcome as well. It's well heated and insulated. It's got, you know, an ensuite with a shower, it's got a bed, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got a coffee maker, a kettle, a microwave, a toaster. Um, but it's also got a wood burning stove with logs. It just looks lovely. I like the, I love a bath and I like the idea of an outdoor bath. But it also looks very cozy and comfortable inside and also a cool sitting area outside. It looks quiet and private, um, but cozy and it's got everything you need. So if that's a bit more up your street, then let's see how much it is. I forgot to check how much some of the other ones were, but if you go on, I'll, I'll link them all below anyway. Let's see, so check availability. Ho oh, ho, it's fully booked of course up until, oh there's a wee space in October. 17th to the 19th. £150 a night for two nights. It's £374 if you include the cleaning fee and the service fee. Airbnb always has these mad extra fees, don't they? Just so you know, when I was looking through all these Airbnbs, there were so many more that I thought looked amazing. And I could make a whole series of this. Like, this was just like the weird and wonderful ones that I saw. But I saw really luxurious ones, like really fancy ones. And I saw more rustic ones. There's so many different let me know if you want to see more, like like what what kind of Airbnbs would you like to see in Scotland? I can do another category of them. If you enjoyed this video, give it a wee thumbs up, do me a solid, share it with your friends, get Airbnb to sponsor me on or any of these places I'd love to visit. The purse strings are a bit tight just now, let's just say that. I really enjoyed making this, I loved looking through Airbnb and finding these little or big places but let me know which one was your favorite and yeah thanks very much for watching and I'll see you later bye